All right, folks, welcome back to the Don's channel. I am the Don Father, and I'm going to be quickly going over the score lines from round five and how it left my predictions, and also next week's fixtures um, for round six. I've put them down, but I haven't actually done my prediction tips yet because I'll wait and see uh, any injury updates, etc., from the fallout of round five. But before I start, I want to drag your attention to the board. The reason why I'm doing this, you all know why it is, I'm absolutely determined to fulfil uh, the channel dream of bringing the channel down under to Australia to do live AFL vlogging tri uh, trip videos. Um, so on that note, the reason why I'm pointing out the Patreon because that is one of the best ways you can help fund and support um, the channel um, and also help us in our dream of being able to afford the trip. Become a patron and um, there's different tiers to becoming a patron um, I think in the silver tier and the gold tier uh, after a few months payments you will receive something like this maybe in the the navy blue not the royal blue that was my own personal one there i've got new ones here these are this with the dawn father on the back um, i'm not going to give these ones away because i think people would probably prefer one of these i just prefer the comfort of this one more and um, so you'll get that there's other various things that you get with becoming a patron as well i am looking at becoming uh, i'm sorry doing um, patrons only videos so that'll be exclusive to patrons only that won't be getting uploaded on youtube possible afl content going on there so if you don't want to miss that you know what you've got to do you've got to become a patron also we have a fundraiser get us to oz it'll be in the description section below for every video that we do and Donate, donate to the channel, come on guys, it really is going to help, it will help us get to Oz quicker. I still have this a delusion maybe, um, that I might be able to do it in 2021, but it doesn't look likely. That's why I'm putting the push on, because you know what, it might happen, it might not. Obviously with the Covid, it's absolutely hammered us, so just had to point that out for you before we started. Anyway then. Round 5, Thursday, um, seen the meeting of Carlton and St Kilda at the Marvel Stadium. And St Kilda, boy, they look quite good this year, don't they? Um, that's three wins out of five for them and two wins out of five for Carlton. It finished 55-73. There's a couple of players that I keep mentioning every week that I'm enjoying um, from St Kilda. Butler seems to be the standout player. He's the one that I, I had to get. I had to get him into my super coach, and I did that along with Rowell. And I'm absolutely devastated because Rowell has obviously had a shoulder injury or clavicle. I'm not too sure the extent of it yet, but hopefully he'll be back soon. Uh, but it didn't look too good, did it? Uh, that was obviously in the Gold Coast Suns game, which I will get to. Um, so anyway. St Kilda won 73-55 um, against Carlton. Friday then, it was Collingwood Essendon, and I picked Essendon for this one. I had a gut feeling about Essendon. I've not been impressed with Collingwood coming forward. I think defensively, they had been pretty good. But you know what? Something's not right at Collingwood. I don't know what it is. Their heads are up their asses. And um, that's two losses in a row for them. And they've had a draw. They've only managed two wins out of five so far, Collingwood. But huge congratulations to Essendon, who have managed three wins out of five, winning 63-48. It was quite a tight enough game. But congratulations to Essendon. Um, obviously, we're on their Anzac Day. And um, Poppy Sash, which I love, which I believe are available. I have looked at the prices. You can bid on them right now up until about I think next Sunday, 13th of July, that might um, end. So if you want to get yourself uh, Essendon um, Poppy Sash for the Anzac Day appeal, do so there on the Essendon website. They look unbelievable. Um, so that's three wins, as I said, out of five. Obviously, it might have been four. That game between Melbourne got postponed because of the COVID scare. Um, so they've only played four games, actually. So the three wins out of four, the other one they've lost. Okay? On to Saturday then, West Coast Eagles versus the Swans. I predicted West Coast Eagles win, and that's exactly what happened. This was more of a West Coast Eagles performance, wasn't it? I have done a review to this game, which I watched live. Um, if you want to check that review out, check out the video. Um, I won't put the link in the description section below. It's just round five, West Coast Eagles versus Swans. The Don Father reviews it. Check it out. 77-43 um, to the West Coast Eagles. That was at the Metricon. 
and as I said, they are starting to look a little bit more like the Eagles, um, I think, um, to the relief of a lot of Eagles fans out there right now. They were probably starting to worry that 2020 was possibly going to be a write-off, but a glimmer of hope now. Um, so yeah, 77-43 to the Eagles. Um, Saturday still, Geelong versus the Suns. I predicted the Geelong win. Absolutely devastating news coming in the way of Rowell, who um, is becoming one of the favourites for the Brownlows. Took an injury. Absolutely devastated to hear that for the young man because he has proven to be an absolute gun this year. But credit to the Suns. They actually fought on. It wasn't a gubbin. Uh, and they've played well. They've got some other good players in there as well, I think, um, before it. Chris Scott has said um, they were going to focus their attention on Rowell. That shows you how well he's been playing. And I had a feeling, and I actually said this in another video, this might start happening with Rowell. But there's other players in the Suns that if you um, focus all your attention on Rowell, that can hurt you. So don't do it. Do that at your own peril. There's some good players at the Suns right now. Anyway, Geelong ran out victors. 89-52. That's three wins out of five for Geelong now. And two back-to-back -back wins. That's something they've not done properly in a while, is it? So, credit to Geelong for seeing it out on Gary Ablett Jr.'s 350th game. Congratulations to him. What a legend he's been for the sport. And, of course, both teams that were playing that day, he's played for both of them. Uh, Bulldogs then at the Marvel um, against North Melbourne. I predicted a Bulldogs win here, and that's exactly what happened. And do you know what? Bulldogs are starting to look really, really good now. Come on! Hashtag the Mighty West. Absolutely brilliant to see. Um, they're playing like the Bulldogs that I fell in love with. And a little bit of fight in them. Bruce managed to score six goals. Fantastic for him. Lubba is absolutely brilliant. Great to see Easton Wood back. And of course, the other great players. Bit of disappointing news being in the way of Bailey Smith. Is it a possible concussion? I actually never read up on it afterwards, which I should have done. Bit of a head knock and a challenge, completely accidental. Um, just a physical hit, and it's ended up dazing him. Um, and it was uh, a bit worrying for a lot of Bulldogs fans, including myself. Um, hopefully, he'll be okay to play and he won't have to sit out. I need to read up on the story, so apologies that I don't know the actual up-to-date um, stuff that's going on there. So anyway... Bulldog smash North Melbourne, 87-38, and I think it was probably the most convincing um, performance of the weekend, actually, from the Bulldogs. Um, try not to be biased on that one, because the, the Lions were pretty good, as were Geelong, um, but I, I feel um, Bulldogs kind of edged it in the, in the way they've played there, from what I've seen and read. So, on to the, probably the biggest game of the weekend, Based on form alone going into this one, uh, Lions versus Port. Um, Lions were going to end it with three straight wins and a loss from round one. Port, clean sheet. Uh, clean sweep, sorry, four straight wins. Um, but you know what? The Lions absolutely battered Port. Port kind of tried a little bit of a fight back, but they huffed and they puffed, but the Lions were sensational from the off. Lucky Neil is actually becoming my odds-on favourite now. Bearing in mind that Fife's injured, I think Cripps... Um, Always performs, but Lucky Neil is absolutely on fire. There's no doubt about that. He's my favourite right now for the Brown Low. Um, but the Lions won 85 48 at the Gabba in front of the crowd. Few crowds, obviously, this weekend as well, which was great to see. It did add to the atmosphere of it all uh, and, in, and the enjoyment of the viewing on the TV for those who can't be at the games. It does give you that little bit more enjoyment when you watch it. So congratulations to the Lions. Port, I predicted. Port let me down. Ken Hickley out. I'm only joking. Um, but I think Port will bounce back from this. I think they're playing well. I don't think um, they were good on the day, but I think there's a lot of positives to take away so far from their year. I mean, incredible um, footy they've been playing. I think they did lack um, that sort of speed. Uh, intelligence in the final third from Xavier Dersma. He's a big loss right now, to be honest with you. Uh, but there's so many good players in that team. Robbie Gray was brilliant on the day, but and Travis Bolt. They were probably the two players that I would say that I enjoyed. I think um, Rosie chipped in by a great goal, but it was, it was just, as I say, 
Porchest Huff and Puff, Lions thoroughly deserved the victory. Congratulations to them, 85-48 winners. So on to the Sunday then, and I actually missed this game because I was on that South Australian Vino and I never woke up. I've slept in, if you can call a half seven morning wake up, sleeping in after drinking till about half past 12. Well, that's what I did anyway, missed the Frio game. Crows versus Frio, both of these two teams going into this, four straight losses, What something had to give, didn't it? And I predicted a Frio win, even even without Nat Fife, I think they've got more quality than the Crows, and I think it all looks off at the Crows right now. That's why I predicted it that way, and that's what happened. Wasn't much between them, quite a low scoring game. 34 54 in favour of Frio. Congratulations to Frio getting their season off with their first win against possibly the worst team in the competition right now as we speak. Second game of the day then, today, uh, Melbourne versus Richmond. I predicted a Richmond win. I think Melbourne, as I say, Melbourne are just meh, aren't they? They're there's not a lot of positives to take from them. They're not terrible. They're not great. They're just one of those teams that are going to be sitting at that bottom uh, quarter of the ladder, I believe, this year. Um, I would be. I would take something spectacular to change my mind on that one. But as it stands, they're not looking too hot. I think. The fact that they're only on three losses and not four is because that game against Essendon was postponed and I would have probably tipped Essendon to win that one. Based on Essendon form right now, um, the way they're playing, they're quite strong. They're not impressive, Essendon. They're just strong enough to grind results out and that seems to be what they're doing. And do you know what? Anything can happen if you can grind results out. And uh, I would have predicted, as I said, an Essendon win over Melbourne and it would have been four losses if that were the case. Um, but anyway... Richmond versus Melbourne, 79-52. Richmond, they'll be happy with that. That's their second win of the campaign, bringing them to 10 points. Of course, they managed the draw. 38 apiece against Collingwood in round two. Um, on a probably, I wouldn't say a shock, because a lot of people would have picked the Giants. I think Hawks were... Um, second favourites for this one going on to this, but I actually predicted them. I thought they would have responded from the two wins that they, they had in a row. Obviously Giants, both teams going into it, um, kind of similar enough form, but Hawks maybe a little bit better on uh, form alone, but the Giants were favourites based on their last game that they played last week, which was against, let me see, Collingwood, Collingwood, which they managed 66-64 victory. Um, but Hawks, I actually thought Hawthorne played all right last week against North, but North did fight back into it in the last quarter. They ran it 58-54. So as I said, not a lot going between these two teams. I predicted Hawthorne, but Giants were fantastic today from the off. I think they 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 they, they, they put the marker down right away. Um, two goals from Hamelberg and two goals from um, let me see, it was. Mine now off the top of my head. Finlayson, Finlayson I think it was. Anyway, i never seen the paperwork there. I did have it wrote down. Four goals in the first quarter and that just set the tone really. And I think Hawks were always just playing catch up in that game. It finished 83-49. My prediction, 7 out of 9 for the second week running. I think that should have me in the top 5 on my tipping comp ladder, which I'm quite happy about, but quite disappointed. I'm disappointed in obviously Port. Um, they, were, they were well beaten at the weekend, but... Do you know what? Giants deserve that win there. Yeah, there's nothing I can say about that. That was always going to be a close-fought game. Um, next week, then, we'll quickly go through the games next week. Thursday at the SCG, Geelong versus Lions. Friday at the Giants Stadium, Collingwood versus Hawthorne. Frio versus St Kilda on Saturday at the Metricon. Um, all these Saturday games in. West Coast Eagles, Crows at the Gabba. Melbourne versus Gold Coast Suns at Giants Stadium. Essendon versus North at uh, the Metricon on Sunday then Port versus Giants Metricon Richmond versus Swans at the Gabba Carlton versus the Bulldog is the last game on Sunday and that is at the Metricon and if you can see the ladder there Port have remained in top spot although um, Brisbane Lions are closing the gap now on them as are the Geelong Cats second and third uh, St Kilda remain in 4th, Essendon in 5th place. There is a, a magnet missing which unfortunately is the Gold Coast Suns and I'm gutted about that because I wish I could have showed you the Gold Coast Suns magnet. One of the children's lost it on me, damn it. But anyway, 6th place, Gold Coast Suns, congratulations, still holding on there just. Um, Giants in 7th, Bulldogs in 8th, Hawthorne 9th, Collingwood 10th, Richmond 11th, they've jumped up the ladder a little bit. Um, 
Kelton remain in, or stay in 12th. Did they move up to 12th? Can't remember now. North Melbourne. Uh, 13th, Sydney Swans 14th, West Coast Eagles 15th, they've jumped a little bit, they'll be happy. The Dockers are below them, so bragging rights, we're above you only by a place, but we are 15th and 16th, which is quite embarrassing to say the least for these two clubs. Um, and Melbourne and Adelaide Crows at the foot of the table in the wooden spoon position. Absolutely brilliant weekend, the footy. And on that note, I do want to say there's been a lot of negativity in the media this week. There has been a little bit of a uh, Positive footy being played, obviously, um, when the tackles are made, they're trying to offload the footy straight away and get rid of it. The players are subconsciously moving it on quicker. The umps aren't fucking about. They're giving free kicks if they're holding on to the footy. So that has been the slight change. Whether or not it's been a deliberate one or just one because of the media fallout, I don't know. However, what I will say is, even before that, I was thoroughly enjoying the footy. Minus round one. Round one, it was the uncertainty of COVID. I think there was no crowd noise coming in in the empty stadiums. Everything was off. I personally didn't enjoy it. But from round two, I thoroughly enjoyed the footy. I'm going to remain positive. You're not going to hear me giving that much negative feedback on the footy. The fact that we've got footy, I'm going to celebrate. The Victoria situation has been um, remedied. Thank goodness for that. We're going to have Victoria clubs moving into different hubs all over Australia from next week. Um... Obviously, um, not next week, but the week after, we're going to have the Derby in Western Australia and Perth there at the Optus in front of a full house. I'm absolutely buzzing to see that one. Um, full capacity crowd, that's what it's all about. This is the place that has to host the grand final for 2020, in my opinion. I, I know and I always say the mecca of this sport, um, the, the heartland of this sport is the MCG. It has to be there every other year, but this year, because of everything that's happened, you have to have it in front of a crowd. It's as simple as that. I don't believe there's any debate in the, the situation. You need to to have it in front of um, the fans of this sport, the people who love this sport. If their club gets there, I'm sure people will move, you know, part seas to get there to Perth for that game, whether it's Richmond there or whether it's, uh, I don't know, the Giants maybe get there again, West Coast Eagles wouldn't have to travel far if they get there, or maybe even a Smoky like a Port Adelaide, or hopefully the Doggies, um, but you know what, I'm sure um, clubs fans will absolutely travel over hell or high water to get there for that game if it's at the Optus and the fact that it's a full house would be absolutely spectacular and what has been a turbulent year for everyone for so many different reasons and it's just positive isn't it it's positive but the footy has been fantastic i'm leaving it on that note the footy has been fantastic so far from round two onwards it's been great it's been great to see some smokies so far um do you know what keeping up um good performances um to to this point we've said who round six is i'll give my predictions possibly tomorrow or tuesday on what i think is going to happen i need to see what's happening with the injuries obviously with raul and bazalanka uh, Bailey Smith at the, the Bulldogs, quite disappointed in that one. Bulldogs are looking good anyway. I hope you're enjoying the channel, guys. There's going to be loads and loads and loads of AFL content, including some reactions as well coming. A couple of quizzes are in the pipeline if um, people manage to do them for me that have promised me. Um, if not, I'll maybe do my own. I quite enjoy doing live YouTube um, streams on the quizzes. Um, and just to reiterate, before we go, become a patron, troops. <laughs> and you'll possibly get a chance of getting one of these in the post for free. Well, I know you're paying your patrons charge, but after a few months payments, I'll give you one of these in the post, send it to your address, um, and all the other perks that go with it. Or if you don't want to sign up to nothing, just throw in a donation to get us to Oz. I really want to put, push on and fulfill the dream of getting down under for the footy. Um, that's what the dream's all about at the end of the day. Um, and fingers crossed, 2021, maybe not, but 2022, absolutely. Cheers, everyone, and I'll see you all soon.